From KSL.com. You want me to tell you something that's going to turn your brain instantly into a steaming pile of shit? Okay, listen. Man used machete on a skateboarder he thought was a fish. Yeah. Man used a machete on a skateboarder he thought was a fish. I don't know how you confuse the two. It's from Salt Lake City. A man accused of attacking a skateboarder with a machete because he allegedly thought the skateboarder was a fish <laughs> has been arrested. Well, Ryan Neville Davis, 23, was booked into the Salt Lake County Jail early Wednesday for investigation of aggravated assault. According to a police booking affidavit, the man had been skateboarding on a sidewalk near 300 South Main Street just before 1 a.m. Wednesday. Okay, so what's going on? <laughs> he produced a large machete and swung it at the victim, striking him on the left forearm. Ooh, wow. Big-ass laceration, stitches, the whole shaboodle. So this happened... <laughs> what is this? He thought he was a fish. I, I, I don't understand. You could be huffing p p fucking paint thinner, and you can't mistake a human being for a fish. I mean, what do you... What do you want? And if you're clean and sober, did you think this... <laughs> I don't even know how you thought of this. You know, this comes after less than two months after Davis was convicted of three counts of attempted aggravated assault. Third district court. What do you think? The guy was a fucking manatee? In the case, he at least, you know, I don't, I don't get it. He approached three fast food employees and threatened them with a knife while demanding food. He was given credit for 42 days he'd already served. You're going <laughs> to... You should probably just keep him in there. I don't think he uh, plays well with others. Let him out in this society? Yeah, uh, that's probably not a good idea. Probably not good. Welcome to No Disclosure. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. This podcast is where we go on the news, see what's happening in the world, and based. Like fine, expensive turkeys and the sheer audacity and craziness that is our news media. Yeah. So what's going on? Yahoo News. Well, <laughs> a man drops his shorts and everything else during his arrest. What? Okay. Let's all, let's have a bet here, okay? I'm, I'm not going to look at the article. I haven't bookmarked it. I mean, this is like pulling stuff up live here. So I'm going to make a, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. All right. If this is, it, it, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm willing to bet this is from Florida. This has to be from Florida. So if I'm right, then I get bragging rights. That's all I want. Just bragging rights. Just the ability to be a douche and say I was right every once in a while. If you win then I will, let's say I'll uh, pick one of you at random and send you one of my most expensive paintings. How's that? Okay. All right. A man drops his shorts bearing all in the middle of a neighborhood during his arrest. Deputies in Flagler County, Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were called to the area after a report of someone acting belligerent and arguing with a woman in the street. Body camera shows Sean Madden yelling at the officers who responded to the scene. And yeah, he just for no reason took all of his clothes off. Mm, I fucking told you it was Florida. I knew it. <laughs> you guys are probably never going to believe me, though. I mean, this was one of the ones that I just pulled up. That's why all I wanted was bragging rights. Oh, boy. I'm really glad that I didn't lose that bet because shipping the big paintings sucks. <laughs> it's Florida. See? <laughs> oh, I got to see this video. He, uh, he, oh, boy. Holy cow, is he naked. He had his shorts on, and then he pulls the shorts down. Now he's dancing. What the fuck is going on in Florida? I mean, don't these people want to avoid, you know, uh, various news outlets, websites, and all? Don't these people want to avoid being Florida, man? I would. But is that at the point where all these criminals is like kind of bragging rights now? Like, I'm Florida man. The news caught me Florida man. Is that is that who gets to be like the boss of the of the fucking general population? Is that is that how you pick who gets to be like the pod boss or something? Florida man. <laughs> Thank you again for a lovely week. This is from NPR. Research finds female frogs play dead to avoid mating with males. Well, <laughs> I know another species you have something in common with there, frog. It's, <laughs> I have a headache. 
In some species of frogs, the females play dead to avoid mating with aggressive males. This shows already that not only do frogs and humans have some similarities, but male frogs have a lot more self-control than human ones. Dr. Carolyn Dittrich, behavior ecologist at the University of Veterinary Medicine, Vienna, tells us more. <laughs> have you ever felt the impulse to ghost a person? Yeah, completely ghost him. Who keeps hitting on you and just can't take a hint. You know, don't ever talk to them again, just disappear. Frogs have taken that strategy to a new level, goddammit. A new study shows that some female frogs, frogs straight up fucking play dead. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's cool. See, we have more in common than you, and then, than you, than you thought, Mrs. Froggy. I know some humans that do that as well. <laughs> I've known some in, in the past before. Not naming names. Susan. Let's carry on. This is from Patch.com. New Jersey custodian performed... <laughs> is it just me? Or is... I, I mean, where? How many episodes in? Almost 200? I need to look at this. I want to know for sure. Okay. Six seasons in. Yeah, this is episode 199. And have you noticed that things are just getting weirder? You know, in the news, like even for no disclosure, things are getting weird. Mankind is starting to fucking lose its marbles, man. It's crazy. Case in point, it's from patch.com. <laughs> patch. <laughs> Why would you name a news? Okay, anyway, there's probably a story behind that. I don't want to know. New Jersey custodian performed sex acts with the school cafeteria objects. Oh, boy. I can't wait to find out what that is. Contaminated food and cafeteria utensils with saliva, urine, feces, and bleach, authorities say. I like how they add the bleach in there. Giovanni Impelizeri. Giovanni Impelizeri. School custodian in Upper Deerfield, Deerfield Township uploaded videos of himself performing sexual acts with inanimate objects. So this is where your problem is, right here. He's... Losing his hair, but he's got the, you know, starting to get the crown on the head, losing the hair, you know. He obviously, he looks over 40, but he's wearing eyeliner, and it's obvious that he dyes his beard. You don't want this cat working at a school. <laughs> Please don't tell me this is an elementary school. Please. Custodial work can be dirty, you know that. But one South Jersey school employee performed a series of lewd and harmful acts that were not a part of the job description, at least as far as I know. <laughs> Giovanni Imperizelli. School custodian in Upper Deerfield Township shared videos of himself. Why? Why would you share videos of yourself doing that? Are, are you fucking stupid? I mean, that's just guaranteed you're going to get caught. Elizabeth Moore School. It doesn't say what kind of school this is. Let's look it up, shall we? Elizabeth Moore School. What kind of school is this? This is... <laughs> Upper Deal Deerfield. Why can't I say that? Deerfield. Fucking stupid today. Um, do -do -do -do. what kind of school is it? it's a, oh, it's an elementary school, you fucking piece of shit. I, I somehow I just knew it. Contaminated food and cafeteria utensils with saliva, urine, feces, bleach, several charges, including second degree official misconduct. Why second degree? Like wh what constitutes the second degree? You know, there's videos of him putting things in his butt. And you say second degree? I don't understand that at all. Investigation began after the school received multiple anonymous tips about disturbing videos in a group chat on Telegram. Officials say, Imperizel filmed the videos at work, shared his profession and various posts. This guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're just begging to get caught. Wow. Well, I mean, you're an over 50-year-old guy who's not a rock star that wears fucking eyeliner. I mean, the school didn't realize that this guy was a problem. And you know what? This isn't a mugshot either. I bet this was the photo taken right from his, like, fucking work shit. You know what I mean? I hate to be judgmental, but you got an elementary school? Don't hire a guy who fucking looks like that. It's bizarre. Freaking weird. This guy looks terrified. He does. It looks like Nikki Six if he shaved himself bald and we started to see the, the recession of the hairline. You know what I mean? The creepy looking dude. Again, not being judgmental. But when you do shit like this, you're fair game, bitch. 
Yeah, I'm like one of the many phone calls I get. You don't like it when Billy makes fun of somebody. Well, don't do stupid shit like this, and I won't consider your sorry ass fair game. How's that? Compromise! This is from Sky News. Somerset Gimp? What? <laughs> Banned from wearing a gimp suit, I thought so, in public and crawling, wriggling, or writhing on the ground for five years. Okay, wait a minute. Let's soak this in. Somerset Gimp banned from wearing a gimp suit in public and crawling, wriggling, or writhing on the ground for five years. We had something similar like this happen recently, remember? About 20, 30 episodes ago? Ah. Joshua Hunt, another one. Self-employed gardener from Claverham, North Somerset, has been linked by police... 25 incidents across the county over the past five years. A man known as the Somerset Gimp has been banned from dressing an all-black gimp suit in public at night, crawling, wriggling, writhing on the ground. Joshua Hunt, 32, was issued with a sexual risk order after police linked him to 25 incidents across the county. Not allowed to do that anymore. No gimp in public. Fucking, <laughs> what possesses somebody to wear a gimp suit in public? That's beautiful. The order also prevents the self <laughs> Self-employed gardener from wearing any type of mask or face covering in public unless for medical reasons. You fucking hear that? This guy is such an animal. This guy is such a piece of shit. He can't wear any kind of mask unless it's cleared medically. That's fucked up. A district judge imposed these restrictions following a hearing at Bristol Magistrate's Court just a week after Hunt was convicted of two offenses under the Public Order Act. Wow, this guy's a fucking winner. Last week's hearing heard how a man in an all-black gimp suit had terrified two female motorists. Well, yeah. Latest in the series of incidents where a man in skin-tight, dark clothing was seen writhing on the ground, stepping out in front of cars, remote locations across Somerset. He's been doing this shit since 2018. Oh, my God. Guy in a gimp suit. Oh, gimp suit. Grabbed his penis over the top of his clothing and also gyrated against the floor. See, I'm glad I read this article. I'm glad. Because when I see headlines, if I, I got a, you know, we got a rule here. Whenever I see the word penis, I will read it. I don't care what the article's about. I don't care if it plays it straight. I don't care if it's funny at all. If it has the word penis in it, we're reading it. And look at that. We got a free penis today. That sounds really bad. Carrying on. Lawrence Wilcox. <laughs> I still ended up saying a penis derivation. Representing Avon and Somerset Police told the hearing that Hunt had been linked to 25 incidents in total. 25. What do we say? The court is satisfied with the intelligence of the earlier incidents were of a sexual nature and committed by the defendant. There is material within that bundle that relates to that of a sexual nature and the acceptance of necessity. Yeah, when they started digging through his shit. Mm -hmm. God. And then what's funny is, like, this is exactly the opposite. I was wanting the, this guy to look like, you know, a fucking weirdo. That's a normal looking dude. Completely normal looking guy. Doesn't wear fucking eyeliner. He's not dyeing his beard, which is creepy, guys. Don't, don't fucking do that. It looks stupid, and everybody can tell. This is a normal guy that you'd meet, like, in line at the grocery store or the library. Little did ye know <laughs> that this guy is uh, living out his Pulp Fiction fantasies. Every day in public. This is from the Smithsonian. Oh, really? Smithsonian, what's up? You guys got something weird? No way. Cats make nearly 300 different facial expressions. What? Really? From ear position to pupil style. Oh, they count that too, yeah. A new study examines how felines express themselves while interacting with one another. So, due to a study, they've proven that cats make nearly 300 different facial expressions. Well, I'm glad they didn't study my fucking cat. Wasabi the cat, my cat, only makes one facial expression. Judgment. Cats can sometimes get a bad rap for being aloof or not emotive. Compared to dogs, felines tend to be more subtle with how they express themselves. Mere flick of an ear, curl of the whiskers. Only sparse studies have tried to decode the mysterious emotional lives of these creatures, but guess fucking what? Somebody did. 300, over 300 facial expressions. Wow, that's amazing. And these are legit facial expressions. These are all like, you know, different. Facial expressions of cats living in multi-cat homes tend to be a little bit different than cats just living on their own. That's crazy. Wow. Common play farce among cats, which are characterized by a slightly dropped jaw, drawn back corners of the mouth. There are so many muscles in a cat's face. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. 
194 minutes of feline footage, 186 interactions and tests. Wow. Look at this. Only 45% of the cats were categorized as friendly. <laughs> 30, 30, <laughs> this is funny to me. 37% were aggressive. 18% were ambiguous. And less than 1% enjoyed being around people. <laughs> That's awesome. So, like, the smallest part of the control group. That's that's funny. Findings show it's good to look at a cat's ears, eyes, and whiskerses to understand if they're feeling friendly. Their mouth provides a lot of information about whether a cat fight is likely. Well, based on these results, then uh, you just need to assume that the cat is not friendly. Because <laughs> at, at best... It's not going to pay your existence any mind whatsoever. It will not give a shit. That's cool. Again, I'm really glad they didn't study my cat. He only has one expression, and that is contempt for you. This is NPR. Wow, NPR, you're uh, you're stepping it up here this week, ain't you? Enhance, honk. Artificial intelligence can now ID individual geese. <laughs> 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 why <laughs> why would you want under L I, I don't understand it it's so fucking stupid we spend money on this too this is taxpayer money and shit why under what circumstances would you need to identify individual geese what the fuck is the point a few the only thing I could think of is that they're using the geese to train AI but why specifically geese that's fucking weird. A few years ago, I mean, we just found out the cats have three different, you know, 300 different facial expressions. Why not use the kitty? Hmm? Be easier to fucking get a hold of. A few years ago, I mean, geese, those things are mean bastards. Geese are fucking mean, dude. A few years ago, Sonia Kleendorfer was interviewing to become the director of the Conrad Lawrence Research Center for Behavior and Cognition in Vienna, Australia. Damn. Shit. Uh. There's got to be some kind of acronym or something. You got to remember that after a few, you know, drinks at dinner parties or whatever. You got to tell people, what do you do for a living? I work at the Conrad Lawrence Research Center for Behavior and Cognition in Vienna, Australia. That's wow. That's amazing. Do some kind of acronym. The KLRC FBAC. That's, that's really long, too. <laughs> KLRC BC? That's eh, still a little long. What about just the. Uh, just the K. There you go. See? I'm smart. My predecessor was telling me this story, she says. Conrad Lawrence was a famous Australian biologist, spent much of her... I don't give a fuck. What's what this weird, like, nostalgic sitting around campfire telling story kind of shit? This is a novel, isn't it, NPR? I don't want to read all this. No shit. This is like six pages of shit. That's crazy. People are... There are people out there that are this bored. Go sit there and read six pages about geese. I mean, we could skim, I guess. Damn. <sighs> this is so boring to even just skim over. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Geese can remember individual faces of everybody that they see. Yeah. It's amazing that they could do that because usually all they see is the Becky as you're running for your fucking life. The geese are mean sons of bitches. Oh, okay. So yeah, they're actually using it to train AI, but it doesn't under it doesn't explain why geese. And that's cool. That I mean, do they have more facial variation than humans? Is it difficult to identify a goose? Because it'd be difficult to identify any kind of fucking animal, really. I mean, why don't you try fucking trash pandas or blind cave salamanders, sand bubbler crabs? I can think of things that are more difficult already. Why geese? And on top of that, you get something that fucking aggressive? <laughs> I don't get it. But hey, that's cool. An AI has been trained to recognize individual faces and can be applied to humans. As if AI isn't already fucking terrifying. This is from 12news.com. Mesa High School teacher on administrative leave. What you do, fucking kill somebody? I know, I go that extreme because that's all that happens to teachers these days. Administrative leave. After students say he dressed up as the devil and said, Hail Satan to students. 
Okay. <laughs> Shut up, ad. I want to see the video of this. You piece of shit! Oh, there it goes. Okay. Ah, fuck you. I want to leave it muted. Uh, wow. Yeah. 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 He's got a pitchfork and the horns on. But he's just wearing a red shirt. I mean, he ain't dressed up as Satan. Yeah, he's got the horns and the the, the, the trident thing, you know. All right, I'll give it to you. Mesa High School, Mesa, Arizona. Being investigated after reportedly dressing up as a devil and saying, Hail Satan to students. Jesus Christ. The fuck is wrong with you? The fuck is wrong with you? We live in a society that it's okay as long as you have a see-through piece of cloth. Doesn't matter how see-through it is. It's okay to show off your fucking labia on TikTok. It's okay to identify as 1,300 things that you're not even close to biologically and never will be. It's okay to say that someone is a hater for speaking their opinion. That's okay. But dressing up as Satan is bad? Okay. <laughs> we had Dr. Phil interviewing fucking cult leaders this week. And then a teacher dresses up as the devil and gets shit for it. I, mean, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think dressing up as Satan is fucking horrible. Teachers should be fired. Matter of fact, he should be taken out back somewhere and beat the fucking shit out of him. Honestly. But I'm just talking about standards here. <laughs> There's a lot of double of them. Why did he do this? It's so fucking stupid. Wave the pitchforks over students' head as they entered and said, Hail Satan. I could. I don't even see how that's a joke. I mean, your sense of humor is fucking. I. I don't. I don't understand it. Some people thought it was funny. Some people didn't like it. Some people were like, whatever, just blew it off. I don't see how that's fucking funny though. I mean, you know what I mean? Why doesn't the teacher dress up as Mr. Bean and fall over something? Right? Why doesn't the teacher dress up as, you know, Van Gogh and then hand people fake plastic ears? That would be funny. Teacher involved in the situation told 12 News the reason why they were dressed up was that way for Halloween Spirit Week. And you work in a public school and you choose Satan. That's awesome. Do you not realize what fucking era you're in? In the 80s, maybe even 90s, you probably could have got away with that. But look at today. You, know, you, you choose that shit. You, you, <laughs> you choose to do that now. I can't imagine how hard it is for teachers. They make close to nothing now. They have to remember 1,300 fucking pronouns and everybody is so glued to their phones. You take it away from a student, they'll probably fucking kill your ass in half the school. Why did you dress up as Satan? You could have done something. Else. I could think of a million times funnier than that. My God. Dress up as Chuck Norris or some shit. There's a million things you could do dressed up as Chuck Norris. <laughs> it's from Law and Crime. Oh, I can't ready. I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We see an article from Law and Crime. This one, I suspect, may be a doozy. I planned it all. Unbelievably damning texts expose order of toxic plant off Etsy plot to poison a man's root beer float with antifreeze compound to get all of his hidden savings. Damn, Law and Crime. That's a hell of a fucking article heading. You know you don't have to make them that long, right? Shit. I've seen articles that fucking long. I planned it all. Unbelievably damning text. Expose order of toxic plant off of Etsy. Plot to poison a man's root beer float with antifreeze compound to get rid of all its hidden savings. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> wow. How long has this website been around? <laughs> you guys really need to step it up a notch. Picture's all grainy and weird. Okay, I mean, I, I get it. Someone tried to get poison, poison root beer float, antifreeze compound to get out of savings. Is that necessarily no disclosure weird? No. I just thought it was funny that this was from, well, what is it? Law and crime. And then I find out that they don't know how news headings work. Cool. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give that law website a hand. Seriously. Seriously. Give them a hand. I'll do it with you. Thank you. For wasting five minutes of my fucking time and my listeners. I appreciate it. This, this is from, I could just cut though, right? But we don't do that here. Norwalk. Daily Voice. Okay. CT man, I assume is Connecticut. Accused of using police lights so he could get to work faster. <laughs> That's a, 
You're going to be in deep shit, buddy. You don't do that. You can, oh, that's, that's a big ticket right there. Connecticut man is charged with allegedly impersonating a police officer after he was found to have some police lights inside his Dodge Challenger so he can get to work faster. What a dick. <laughs> county, New London County resident Michael Marshall, 43 of Groton, 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 was charged on Wednesday, Wednesday, October 25th. Boy. My, have you been listening to this? Have you been listening to the show so far, like the whole thing? My brain is just not fucking braining today. I'm tripping over my words. I can't pronounce shit. I haven't been getting on a lot of sleep lately. I mean, I'll admit that. You guys know, a lot of you do, that I had a really bad stutter when I was a kid. Man, sometimes it comes out, but that's only when I'm like nervous and shit. Tripping all over my words? God, I should run for president. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't, uh, because I know how to exit a fucking stage. According to Connecticut State Police, an on-duty <laughs> trooper out of Bridgeport, after observing the Challenger display several steady red and blue illuminated lights. You're in fucking trouble. <laughs> how much of an asshole you gotta be? I'm late for work, so I'm gonna just pose as a law enforcement officer. God. Where'd you even get those lights, anyway? You wanna know how much that is, huh? In Connecticut, anyway? $5,000 surety bond. That's not counting court costs. That's not counting when you get fucking sentenced. It's $5,000 just for doing it. Can we do... Don't do it. That's crazy. Imperson I mean, God. Impersonating a... <laughs> fucking dick. Impersonating a police officer just because you're late for work. And you give that... Sh that the, the most disturbing thing to me isn't impersonating an officer. It's that you give that much of a shit about fucking work. <laughs> This is from Fox KTVU. Bay Area Ritz Carlton sued after woman was allegedly served semen contaminated water. Yum yum. <laughs> Ritz Carlton, really? This is one of the nicest hotel chains in the fucking world. We're talking Half Moon Bay, California, boy. Ritz Carlton. Yeah, it's as fancy as the name. I got kicked out of a Ritz Carlton one time. <laughs> Never stayed at one. But I got thrown the fuck out of one. And let me tell you, that five or so minutes I was in there, it was pretty nice. <laughs> Jane and Doe. Okay. They don't know their names. Jane John Doe. Okay. Arrived at Washington State. Oceanfront Luxury Half Moon Bay Resort for the weekend of November 18th, 2D2D2. -dee 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 -dee, to visit the daughter attending a nearby university for the Thanksgiving holiday and to celebrate Jane's birthday. I don't give a shit. Plans were... What is this significantly derailed after Jane had a sip of a Ritz Carlton branded water bottle that <laughs> contaminated with semen? Yeah, <laughs> how did you know? You didn't have it tested right then and there, did you? Did you? You're like, hmm, man, something tastes familiar. <laughs> you had to. You had to. How in any other way are you going to know for sure that that's semen? What school did you go to? <laughs> Be like, oh, this tastes like last Friday. What the fuck's good? Jane and John Doe suing the $800 a night resort. Really? $800 a night? That's kind of cheap for Rich Carl Ritz Carlton. Honestly, that must be one of their shitty rooms. Yeah. <laughs> must be like one of the lower. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not fucking around. I mean, I, when <laughs> I remember even back in the day, there were certain rooms that were like two, three thousand dollars $800 a night. I know that's a lot of money, but for Ritz Carlton, honestly, that's really not bad. That must be for, like, the cot on the floor, you know, <laughs> concrete mattress room. The plaintiffs have not identified themselves in the lawsuit to avoid harassment. Who the fuck is going to harass you? I'll probably give you a high five for recognizing semen that quickly. But, like, you go! You go, you go. <laughs> You're naughty, and I know it! So, she... <laughs> lawsuit claims one of the hotel's employees ejaculated... Into I love that word, don't you? Into a Ritz Carlton labeled water bottle, delivered it to Jane and John Doe's room. Jane drank the semen contaminated water before she realized it had been defiled by a criminal deviant and she had been sexually assaulted. Yes, I make jokes and all that, but it is sexual assault and it's a very fucking horrific form of sexual assault. It's, it, you know, you get a sexually transmitted diseases just for drinking a fucking water bottle and everybody's going to think that, you know, that's 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 fucked up. Yeah, like God knows, God knows where that per where that fucking dude has been. 
They want law enforcement to do their own analysis, DNA samples from the semen, cross-referenced against sex offender registries to identify the suspects. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I would start with the hotel's employees. Don't you think that might be a smart way to go? But you know what? I'm going to give you brownie points for saying check the sex offender registry. Because if someone's done this before, they've probably done it before that, too. <laughs> But, you know, maybe start with the, uh, you know, employees of the hotel because if somebody brought you one, that might be a good start. <laughs> you won't have to utilize precious resources. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just impressed and uh, honestly a little bit turned on that you were able to identify the semen as soon as you took a sip. That's that's just. I fucking love this show. I'll catch you guys later. That's all we got. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> Oh man, I really hope Cassie doesn't listen. She doesn't listen to the No Disclosure podcast anymore. But occasionally, you know, she'll like skim over one if she likes the title or whatever. Cassie, just disregard everything I just said. No, she... <laughs> I really hope she doesn't listen to this one. I might get into a little bit of trouble. So this is where where the hell where's my outro? Where's my outro? Okay, there it is. Thank you. Gee Wills. That's all, friends. Special thanks to this week's sponsors who make this show possible. Make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page in this episode's description, where as little as a dollar a month, you can get everything from bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, giveaways of certain tiers, outtakes, bloopers, a podcast just for the patrons. Who does that? This guy. Special thanks to the patrons, by the way. The Conkle Homestead YouTube channel, Donald Haynes, Dillagaff, Kristen Belt, I appreciate all of you. And yeah, that is, uh, that's our she blows. That's everything. We'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye, my babies. I love you all. And be fancy. Oh. Maybe, it, maybe, maybe it was just too quick for my brain this morning. Like, you know, I, I, I had a bit of a cue. Like, I wanted to get as many articles out as I could. We got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. I'd shoot for ten, always. And here we go, eleven. Did I just go too fast for my own mouth parts? Or should I really run for president? I'd be the best fucking president ever. Ever. <laughs> Vote for me, damn it. 2024. I promise stuff. Everybody will get stuff. That's pretty good. Use that as a campaign slogan. Stuff. Did you know it's the basis here? No disclosure, business miss. Confiscated evidence, no smoking gun. Nothing.